All right. Um, good morning. Um, let's, I'm trying to move out of the way of this and that. So watch out for your animals and lie down. Pull your knees into your body. Close your eyes, melt your shoulders, and take a few breaths to help you ground. This has been a, a tough week, I think, for everybody. If you're joining us sometime in the future, this has been a hard week in this part of history. And we tend to, to function, shove things into compartments. And yoga is an invitation to open slowly, <laughs> depending how much you've shoved in there, the compartment doors. So that in the sanctuary of your space on your mat, through your body, you can work through this material. And you knowing your own self, um, you know how, how much or how little to do in terms of opening those doors. But I'm just bringing it up as an invitation because I think it's really important that we don't shove it in there permanently because it tends to fester and cause problems down the road. Slide your hands to your knees and begin to circle the knees. And um, I posted this actually yesterday. I was really just, I, I, I've known since I read and have met um, Bessel van der Kolk, um, that body, the body keeps the score isn't quite right, but I didn't quite know how, like what was off about it. And I heard yesterday from this woman um, who studies emotions and versus feeling that the brain keeps the score, the body is the score card. And it's an important distinction. Pull the right knee into the chest, left leg up to the sky, begin to flex and point. Again, let your shoulders melt. Flex the foot, spread it open, spread the whole sole of the foot open. And just notice how the patterns of the foot may in some way correlate to what I'm talking about with compartmentalization. The foot, you know, like Karen was saying, you can teach animals anything. Like our, our feet are adaptive and they learn these gnarled or they become gnarled from patterns of use and dysfunction or function. So we want to open up that fascia and give it a chance to learn something new. Start to circle the leg from the root of the thigh, the root of the femur. And really try to keep that foot out of its conditioning in a more neutral pattern. So I'm keeping my foot flexed, which I guess isn't neutral. And I'm opening the sole of the foot. I'm trying to spread the toes, go the other way. I'm trying to open my knee because my knee is habitually micro bent. And just through the effort of trying to shift that, I feel all these new muscles turn on because they're habituated not to. So simply from trying to make that little change, um, I wake up all these parts. Hold the leg still and you try it. Looking at if if you can see your leg, where is it um, slightly bent or slightly different than your brain has mapped it? Like when you look at the evidence, does it match the picture in your brain? 
and then send the leg all the way down and let it grow roots into the earth. Pull the right knee in and give that a nice circle. And maybe, Caitlin, when you do this, hold that hip. So um, I know it's your other side, but hold that outer hip with your hand. Just push in there and see if there's any information. And you'll be comparing sides. So starting on this one um, that maybe doesn't hurt, you'll have information. Go the other way. And then holding the front of the shin, draw the knee toward the right shoulder, relaxing the left shoulder, letting that chest be open. Relax the back of the neck. Open the right palm and press the leg into the hand and the hand into the leg. Feel if this activates, where it activates um, in your core muscles, more in the, in the, on the trunk and in that outer buttock. And then push as hard as you can, leg into hand, hand into the leg, give it all you got for a second. Okay. And then as it relaxes, notice that it at least appears to open more. My left hand is hooked around my left hip bone um, to help ground it and also it just feels good. Um, palm on the inside of the right thigh and push the thigh into the hand and vice versa. Let that tension build, build, build. Feel that engage. Oh, deep in your hip flexors, deep in your abdominals. Go as hard as you can. Three, two, one. Let it uh, open. Ah. And then bring the knee carefully into the midline because you've, you've stretched it in a new way. Shift your hips over to the right. Let the knee fall over to the left. I like a block here under the knee. You may not want it or need it. I just think it's really nice. And then reach the right arm open. And then let's add length. Reach through your toes and the crown of the head getting really long. And then with, let that right hand reach more to the right, pinning the left shoulder down. Hold the right shoulder blade on the back. Let that travel toward the hand. And then hold everything still. Let it relax onto the floor. And arch your back a little bit like a seahorse. So you get an exaggerated curve in the lumbar spine. Maybe knit the front ribs a little bit closed. And watch, observe the breath travel up and across the collarbones. Let's glide the right hand down, out in front of us, over the head and all the way around. And again. Bend, oops, kicking a little here. Bend your left knee and reach in the direction of that left foot with your right hand. Kick the foot into the hand. Notice how this exaggerates the archway in the back. And then carefully re-extend the leg. Reach to the right arm. Use that momentum to pull you onto your back. And hold your knees into your chest once again. Ah, let out a sound. Inhale through the nose. Ha, ah, let the jaw really open. Ha, ah. and let's hold the knees and circle once again. Pulling the navel toward the spine, keeping the shoulders melting. Go the other way. And this just allows us to synthesize what we've done so far. And I think just these observations help open up compartment, compartments in the brain. And then wrap your hands around your left shin. I like switching the lacing of the fingers. It's just a little task for the brain that I think is useful. Begin to flex and point that right foot. And observe the distortions of the ankle of the foot that may be habitual, the toes. 
And through slowing down or maybe speeding up, although that's unlikely, you can bring the foot into a better alignment. Better, I guess, is subjective, but just sort of neutrally better. Like if it's pronated or supinated or rotated, go for more neutral. And then flex that ankle nice and strongly, dorse flex the foot and spread the sole of the foot open, try to spread the toes apart. Sent Taylor this, there's like this crazy bunion fixer thing. It like wraps around the foot and moves the toe. I think the point of the, the video was you sh that there's a better way that you can do it through strengthening your fascia, but that machine thing looked really delicious. But imagine that, that you have a toe spreader on and you can really, open up that big toe. And then if your leg is bent, see if you can straighten it a little more, just an, just an idea and see what that idea does, what the body does with that idea. And then circle the leg. It is from the root of that femur, but I think thinking of it from there is useful. And then go the other way. And then send the leg slowly all the way down. Let it root into the earth as you pull your left knee a little closer if there's room. Bring your hand to your outer left hip um, just to investigate. If there's pain there and circle the left knee. And maybe having the hand, this is really for Caitlin, but I'm sure all of us can benefit. The hand on that outer hip will even if you're bra you don't understand it, it will bring some knowledge, some awareness to your brain that could be helpful. That senses, right, our, the sense of touch is connected to so many parts of the brain. Who knows what it's turning on? What kind of connections you might make? And then Hold the front of the left shin, pull the leg toward the left. Ah. I'm hooking my hand around my right hip bone and encouraging it toward the right a little more. Place the hand underneath your left leg and push the leg into the hand and the hand into the leg. Create that isometric. Tension, let it build and feel how that radiates into the abdominals, into the buttocks, and go as hard as you can for three, two, one, and then let it relax. Notice the change, right? This gives the brain a moment to catch up. Really important because the brain keeps the score. So it's got to be included. And then bring the hand to the inside and push the thigh into the hand and the hand into the thigh. Go as hard as you can for three, two, one, and let it open. Ooh. It's always exciting when there's just a little new discovery or big discovery. And then guide the leg to the midline, shift your hips over to the left. If you want your block under the knee, move it um, or not. Shift your hips so you're really on the outside of that right one. Reach your left arm open and let's go for length. Reach through your right toes and crown of the head and look out over that left shoulder. Roll your left hip away from the waistline. Breathe in deeply. Use the exhale to let your body drop back into the ground. Keep that right shoulder pinned as your left shoulder blade folds onto the back and moves out toward the left hand. Begin to circle the arm down, out in front of you, overhead, and all the way around. 
do that again. Keeping our shoulder mobility, our shoulders lubricated and that mobility present. We don't want to lose that. Bend that right knee, reach into to the direction of that right foot. If that's too much, don't add that. And kick the foot into the hand. And notice how this creates a deeper arch in the back. Maybe knit the front ribs for a little more quad activation, a little more abdominal engagement. Foot into hand. And then carefully let it go. Reach to the left arm and roll to your back. Pull both knees in. Give your body a moment to be still. For your brain to recalibrate. And synthesize. Release your hands, rock up to a seat, and make your way onto your hands and knees. Tucking the toes under, arching the back, raising the chest up. Exhale and push the floor away, lift the tummy, spread the shoulder blades. Inhale and arch, and exhale. Grounding. Make your way to a neutral back. Extend the right toes tucked under on the floor behind you. Go ahead and press through that right heel and then knit your front ribs together, getting a nice calf stretch. Raise your right leg with the hips squared and left arm forward, bending both right knee and right el left elbow. Pull your elbow back and move your knee um, to the side, sorry. I don't think I made that right, said that right. Knee out to the right, elbow bends to the left. Inhale, extend, exhale, knee out to the right, left elbow to the left. Yep, inhale, and like a flying squirrel, exhale. Inhale, squeeze, knit those ribs, exhale. Inhale, flying squirrel, exhale. Place your left hand down, extend your right leg out to the side. Come on up. Inhale, raise both arms up. And just feel that nice long side stretch. Right hand down the leg, right leg, left arm up and over the ear, lean toward that right leg. Hips under, knit the front ribs down. Look up. Bring both arms up, bring your left hand down, right hand down and begin to, by bending the right leg, circle using the knee as the fulcrum. Very good. Get it, get it. So move that right sits bone away from the midline. Find that inner groin. This is an action that we don't do in our regular life enough. So it might be a bit rusty. Is it? You try to do it in here. Go the other way. And then hold still. Come lower toward your elbows. Tuck your left hand under for a twist. Your left hand can grab your right leg. Walk your right fingers forward and twist. You might fall, try to roll, roll well, but um, keep your right foot planted, planted and hopefully you won't fall. Twist under that right shoulder. And if you're steady, you can play with this. That right arm can go maybe toward the floor. This is good for me, let me just stay right here. Experimenting with turning on the muscles in my back by pulling the floor toward me, pushing down through that left arm or holding that right leg for stability. Bring your right hand in front of your face, bend the right knee, 
Let's stay in this twist. Leave that left shoulder there. Just bring your knees toward about hip width distance. Hips are over the knees. Stay in this twist. Changes it just a little. You might feel more of a bite in that left hip. Maybe you can lift it a bit so it doesn't rotate. And then the twist is more in the middle of her back. Yeah. Push down through your right hand and come on up. Very good. Inhale. Let's do a few rounds here to synthesize. Round of cat cow. Inhale and lift the chest. Ha. Ah. Exhale. Round. You want to stick out the tongue in that cow. Pull it in for cat. And out for cow. Eyes open wide as you look up, tongue goes long. Inhale. And you may feel more abdominal connection when you do that. The tongue has a relationship to those muscles. One more time, which you know makes sense. Inhale. Oh, I guess it's exhaling. I don't know. Oh, that's also interesting. Uh huh. So I'm exhaling in cow, which feels weird. And inhaling in cat, so they sort of like it. Okay, and then we're going to find neutral, reach the left leg back, tuck the toes under. Just enjoy that calf stretch. Pushing back through that left heel, knit the front ribs in, so you're toning while you're there. Then pick up the leg and reach the right arm forward, hold, knit those ribs once again. We're going to bend the elbow to the right and the knee up to the left. Inhale, extend. Exhale, lying squirrel. Inhale, exhale, or like a half a squirrel. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, squeeze. Place the right hand down, kick the left leg to the left and rise. Inhale, raise both arms up. Exhale, lean to the left, stretch that right side long, and try to move that right arm so it doesn't come forward. You want it back by your ear, buttocks under, ribs slightly closed. Look up if you want, under that arm. And then bring the right hand down, left hand down, Using the left knee as a fulcrum, circle. Like a spider leg. Mm -hmm. Good job, you guys. Sharon, can you see Taylor's box? See how she's doing it? She's got a white shirt, black pants. She's going probably, I think you can do a little more like that. Uh -huh. Exactly. Yeah. A little more. Good. Good. If it feels good. Yeah, I think that gets you into more of the attachments. And then when you're ready, come on down onto your forearms. Tuck your right shoulder under, reach toward your left leg, and begin to twist. Maybe that left hand spiders forward onto your dog. Cat or floor. And make this your own. Try not to fall. So really keep that left leg planted. If you're going to explore with your left arm, which you might. And then bring your left hand there in front of your face to help you. You're going to pull that left knee next to the right, not directly, like train tracks different distance, but stay in the twist. So leave that right shoulder under. Knees are back behind or under the hips. and. Just hold here in this little rabbit twist. Oh. 
For me, it's really not as comfortable. That right hip might be overly rotated. It is in my case, so I have, did I say hip? I meant, did I say knee? I meant hip. That, so that right hip, you want it at the same height as the left, so that the twist is really in the middle of her back. Cool. And then come on out and leaving your knees where they are, let your chest go forward and down toward the floor for a full puppy spread. Forehead on the floor, but if you uber bend, your chin is on the floor. Put some strength into your forearms as you bring yourself down to the floor. Walk your elbows forward just a little so they're under your shoulders and lift your head and chest. Windshield wipe right your feet. Relax your legs back, slide your right knee out to the right and come down onto your chest. Push that right leg down into the floor and align the shin just a little more to the, so that it's under the knee. So that it's a little more of a right angle. And push your pelvis down into the floor. So hips are dramatically tucked under, posterior tilt, um, the tailbone's tucked, belly's in. And push that right inner thigh into the floor a lot. And just notice what that engages. And then walk up onto your elbows, bend your left knee in, and stretch your left quad. Straighten that leg and engage the hamstrings. So more than stretching the quad, I'm using my hamstring muscles, which are lazy in my case. <laughs> so squeeze as though there were something you're squeezing behind your knee. Squeeze and straighten. And then prop yourself up a little more and slide your right knee over into um, an, a 90 degree angle. So bring your right knee in line with your right hip, your right ankle in line with your right knee. And then do the same. So make a right, make right angles with your left leg. Left knee in line with left hip, left ankle behind the in line with the knee. Twist over to the right. You can be down, your elbows are up. I'm gonna be up. Just let yourself just be right here. Notice if their front of that left hip is stuff has stuff going on. And then you're going to push down through your inner left knee. So the left knee pushes into the floor and you're internally rotating that leg. So you're picking up your left foot, left ankle. So push down into the ground, leverage the floor and let that left foot come up. So it's like massively internally rotating that leg, getting a little more torque on it because we, oh my gosh, there it goes. Because we have a floor. So I'm really engaging actually that left booty, which is great because I do want to tone there. Okay, two plus that. Okay. <gasps> and then let that relax. <gasps> that was a lot for me. <laughs> and then push down through your left ankle and lift your left knee up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a little like a dog going pee. A little bit. And then relax that. We're going to lean back here onto our elbows. Okay. Ooh, 
some nice pops for me here. Now let's try that internal rotation from this position. Try to push your left knee down and see if you can get that left foot up. In my case, no way. But my mind, right? So I must have a lot packed in there in my brain. My brain's like, it's like a record skip. So there's something in there, some door I don't want to open. So just, I can't do it, but I'm just asking my brain to try. My brain's like, I don't know what you're talking about, lady. So I know my brain has a skip there. There's some compartment I haven't opened in a lot of years in there. So push down to that left knee, try to pick up that left ankle. We got it. I don't want you to do the other one because I think it might torque the knee. But let's do the front leg. Push down through that right knee and try to lift that right ankle. Nice, Sharon. No hoist. So again, I get, I get not much. Oh, not much. To keep the knee down and lift the ankle up. And then push down through the ankle, lift the knee. That one my, that one my brain can do. And we're like, sure. Sure, I can do that. Really push down, leverage the floor. See if you can tone that inner right thigh. Awesome. Relax it, come up, and let's slide that leg back. It's like a reward to do half pigeon from there. Lengthen that left leg and go ahead, crawl forward. You are lucky enough to have a puppy there. Right, or block, or the floor. Send breath into your back waist. If that's confusing for your brain, a trick is to use your peripheral vision. So your eyes are closed, but you're imagining looking out the peripher peripheral, periphery. And I don't know, but that engages, that helps your body, the diaphragm open and the breath moves sideways. Now, can you employ any of those fun games we just played here? I'm not saying you have to, but I like to. So push down through that right shin, activating that, and then I can rotate my hips more squarely. And then that lets me consider a back bend. Walk your hands up and start to bend that left knee. Again, curling, oh, using those hamstrings. Curl that foot in toward the glute, extend it long. Curl that sucker in, oh, extend. Feel that back leg engagement. And if you want to come up and hold that foot with both hands or one of your hands or something like that, now I am pushing down a lot with that right shin. I'm flexing my left foot, and this is a pretty deep back bend. So I'm holding my left leg. And I'm just enjoying this moment. Chin up. Mm, just letting that happen. Gorgeous, you guys. Good, Elena, good. Release out carefully. Lean to your right. Swing that left leg forward. I did it with a bent knee. You could do it with a straight leg. I'm going to swing it back. I'm not letting it touch the ground and swing it forward just a couple times. Swing it back, swing it forward. I'm trying to use some deep abs and now I'm trying to do it with no hands on the floor. Yeah, I have my hands on my abs because I want them to work. Ah, let's swing that left leg forward. Right hand sweeps a nice big circle up to the sky. Right hand comes back behind us. Come up onto your right shin. Back bend, side bend, left arm overhead. Hips pressing up. Come on, our Suzanne Summers. Night, all this inner thigh hip stuff. And then come on down. Sit in crisscross applesauce. 
left shin in front of the right shin. Flex both feet, push down into the ground, organize your spine tall, rib cage open, collarbones wide, hands open. A few breaths of stillness. If the brain keeps the score, we want the brain to change the scorecard. So we gotta let it catch up. I guess I'm implying the brain is somewhat behind. I think the brain's way ahead in most ways, but in some ways, maybe it does lag behind. It seems to be the current way of thinking, but also in the past, Desko Char, who is Krishnamacharya's son, um, he used to teach vinyasa, and then over time he really he put child's pose in between everything because he realized the nervous system needed that moment, moments um, to recalibrate, synthesize, and make edits. And let the eyes blink open. Come on forward onto your hands and knees. Crawl your feet back. Let's take plank. I'm just going to face you. So holding plank if you can, or adding on if you'd like. Right hand to left shoulder, left elbow, left wrist, and down. Left hand, right shoulder, left elbow, wrist, down. And do this a couple of times. And when you're even hold, take your right leg to the right and your right leg back to center. Left leg to the left and back to center. Right to the right and back. Left out and back. Now, can you hop? Maybe both out and in. Little leg jumping jacks. Out and in. Let's do five, four, three, two, one. Hold that wide space. Wide bullwinkle squirrel stance. Hold, squeeze your outer butt. Just let it squeeze, tummy in, maybe new muscles. And then bring both knees down. I'm like almost in a frog, but I'm gonna straighten that right leg and slide into half frog on my face. Come down. Imagine you're looking at your peripheral vision and breathe into the sides of your waist. So pretty drive and fear are both straight ahead eyeballs. So super fat, like intense straight ahead eyeballs, pretty drive that like I have to eat, I have to kill, or I'm gonna be killed, eyes are forward. So using a peripheral vision also is a cue to the nervous system that we're okay. That it can afford, it's not, we're not being, we're not costing it, we're not taxing it at the moment. It can afford to give us all the good things that we want and need to heal, to change. Now push that left leg into the floor and deep posterior tilt. So hips are under tailbone, un hips are like going up toward the chest, tailbone down. And raise, come up onto your elbows. Start to bend that right knee. Very angle. Bend that right knee and straighten, just engaging the right hamstrings. Oh, mine are not strong, <laughs> I that. It feels really good to work them. One more time, squeeze and release. 
Come on up onto your hands and maybe just reach that, oh my gosh, foot toward your head. Ice. And release it. Let's bring that left leg forward and we'll come into our 90-90. So bring that yourself into straight alignment, straight lines. Turn to your left and take a few breaths. You're not adding any muscle engagement here. You're just observing when passive what you notice. You can stay up here or come down onto your elbows. And we're gonna start with that in easier, or at least for my body, it's easier. Push down through your left knee, and, oh, sorry, right, right knee, right knee, right knee, into the floor and internally rotate that right leg, the right heel will come up. Push down, 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 down. A lot, I mean, I'm literally shaking. I'm pushing so much, it doesn't hurt. It's just shaking. And usually that's one of those signs that there's something in there. Some, <laughs> some score I'm keeping showing up there. Or I've kept. All right, let's put that down and push down through the ankle and see if you can lift that back knee. Keep that ankle down. So the goal is not to lift the knee, the goal is to push the ankle down and then try to lift the knee so that you feel it zip into sensation into that outer right glute and thigh. And relax it. Let's come down onto the elbows. Elena, that's a good idea. Is it just to the key on the knees? Sorry. Um, okay, so we're on our elbows. It's hard to even push. Keep get that right knee down, actually, on this side for me. It's new. But I'm gonna, so I move my elbows forward and I want to push the right knee down into the floor and see if I can lift the right foot. It's a no way for me right now. Wow. Way different on this side, worse. The other side was like, Huh, this side's like, no. So right knee down, and you lift, push the right knee into the floor, and pick up that right foot. Oh. So that was fun. And then I don't want you to do the other one because I think you could tweak the knee, but we're gonna do the left, the front leg. So push that left knee down into the ground, and try to lift the outer left ankle. Belly is in, by the way, if you want to use your, keep your abs engaged, push down, push down as hard as you can with that left knee. Try to lift that ankle. Oh, and then relax. And again, just take a few breaths here. You don't want to tax, cause the nervous system at this point. And when you feel ready, push down through the outer left ankle and lift the outer left knee. But the goal is really to push down through the ankle. Push down, push down. And that left knee will come up, belly in, push down for three, two, and let it relax. We're gonna come forward here and slide into a nice half pigeon. And Elena, if you wanted, you could do figure four on the back. That felt like your time. Come down. And this can be fully passive or active by pressing that left shin into the earth, just like we did, like, except here it's a little more evenly distributed, but you're pushing down the left shin into the ground and rotating the hips, reaching back through those right toes. There is a scissoring of that left leg sliding into the socket as that right hip travels, right thigh moves into its socket. So both legs are moving into the socket, 
which brings us to zero. And if you want, you can come on up, activate that left shin, and you're gonna bend that right knee and straighten using those right hamstrings. Curl them in oh, and squeeze them out five times. And then I would almost say take a blanket, put it in front of your mat and try to pull your butt toward the blanket and travel around your room because that's going to activate your hamstrings more. And then if you want, reach back for the leg with your hands going upright or do bridge here or camel and take a back bend. Oof. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Kick it. Let it open your chest. <gasps> and bring those hands forward. Lean on your left hip. Swing that right leg oh, forward and back. Now I'm going to try it with no hands. Or hold the abs, good idea, Caitlin. Sheridan, thank you. Oh, and now I'm gonna prop myself up on that left shin, stick that right leg out, and reach over the right ear or more of a back bend here. Hips under, reach it. Ooh. And circle it. Gorgeous, you guys. Down. Let's come right into plank or forearm plank. Hold. Right knee toward right shoulder, right leg back. Left knee toward left shoulder, left leg back. Do five each side if you can. Now leave your right knee there, do a push up and up. You could you have your left knee down for help? Right, elbows bend and up, elbows bend and up. One more time, bend and up. Can we pull ourselves forward, bend the elbows and pick up that back leg? Maybe, maybe. Bend the elbows, right leg is forward, pick up that back leg, and then belly flop. <gasps> Come down onto your elbows for a moment, bend the knees, windshield wipe the feet. Oh, my hamstrings are working, which feels painful, but delicious. Hey, yeah, yeah. It's been a great prop. Come back up onto into plank. And or on your elbows, left knee to left shoulder, step it back. Left knee to left shoulder, step it back. Couple of these. Great, so we did both sides and then we held the left. Yeah, so let's do five each side. So one, two, three, four. On five, left elbow forward, left knee forward, come down, bend those elbows, and pick up the back leg. Oh, I know, we did those push-ups. My brain quickly socked those away. Do push-ups here if you want. That back knee can be down. Do about five. With that knee forward, one, two. Oh my gosh, these are hard for me. Oh, they didn't use to be. Three, four, and five. Yikes. Come on up. Shake out your wrists. And we are going to do camel. So take your hands to your back. Press your hips forward. Lift the chest. If it feels good to go further, toes can be pointed or under. 
grab those heels and camel here. Bird three, two, and come up, shake out your tail, cross at the ankles. Thank you, Lola. Right shin in front and sit up tall, close the eyes. Uncross your legs, let your eyes open. Bring your heels forward, arms forward, and you're gonna roll down. So compress your abs on the way down. Like you wanna really just take one suitcase, one carry on, but you've got two weeks worth of stuff. So you're squishing your stuff down, really squeezing it in, compacting it as you come. Now, when you reach the low back, pick up the right leg, Pick up the left leg, hold. Stretch the legs out long, reach the arms back, forming the shape of a canoe. Point your toes, hollow your front. Reach back through your arms, reach out through your toes and rock here. Five, four, three. It's tiny, it's tiny, it's just abs. It's so little, you guys. Not what you're doing, not what you're doing, although you're all doing it. Tiny little, little rocks, like it's just a, not a big wave, just a little, little bumps for three little ocean ripples. Two, it's tiny, it stays in the house. One, oh, drop your head. But since you all seemed like you needed a good rock, let's get those legs up to the sky and into plow. Walk your elbows close, support yourself. If you want shoulder stand from here, awesome. If you wanna keep the knees bent, awesome. Whatever kind of inversion here that you feel good with, block underneath or supported back bend. It's so good. You know, sometimes the ankles just feel like they're itchy, like too much sodium. I don't know that it's necessarily that, but it feels like that. Stuff gets stuck down there. Really nice and helpful to engage pelvic floor here and tone. Tone the pelvic floor, tone the organs, bottom of the organs that gives um, so gravity, right? Pushing on us from the top down all the time. This is important. So things don't weaken and fall out, start falling out of us. Or fill with fluids or, yeah, I guess swelling is filling with fluids. Softly. Begin to bend the knees as they can move to the forehead or ears. You're just a little horseshoe crown, curls up. Or you can cross your ankles and it can be more of like a strange little slumber pose. You're, you can imagine going to sleep here. I wonder if some of you have sleeping stuff. I wonder if you just did this. If it would be soporific. Been meaning to tell this story again while I'm here. Um, when I was young, I had horrible night terrors, like you know, really bad. 
And my mom has a guru. When I was 15. And I said, I told her about it. And she said, I'm just get up and do your yoga practice. At the time, I thought she was crazy. But I did start to do it. And um, that was the beginning I mean, of me really being able to sleep. Mm. It took 10 years. <laughs> it didn't happen overnight, but it worked instantly. But it did work enough. And after about 10 years, it, it really started to really work. Mm. Okay, come on down slowly. Counter this with fish pose or another back bend or lying down with your chest open. You want to really open up that upper chest here to counter because you're amazing. Yes, to make the heart the centerpiece of the pose. Pushing this case down into the hands to come down flat. Grab hold of the head from the base and adjust it. Move it side to side. Center it. If your ponytail, if your husband is in the way, adjust that or whatever. Make sure that you have a really good place to rest. Again, we're in the sanctuary of our spaces, our mats. We have done, a, we've used our bodies in different motions than we do typically. And it does invite the brain to open doors that perhaps have been sealed shut. Here, we aren't looking to analyze anything. We're really looking to shut down so the body can reboot. And as we all have learned a thousand times by now, all electrical equipment, if you turn it off for real, give it, you know, a few minutes and then turn it back on, miracles happen. We are no exception. Take a deep breath in. And exhale it out. Please take a deep breath. And exhale. Take a deep breath in. Exhale. And let I heard this sound bite yesterday that whatever anyone else thinks about you, it's just electrical impulses in someone else's head. And I'm going to say, at least for right this moment, for Shavasana, the same to you. Whatever you're thinking, whatever thought you may be chasing down, these are just electrical impulses in a box. For now, don't chase anything, don't follow anything. Just let the electrical impulses slow down and imagine them stopping for a brief moment.
And we'll turn it back on with that slow hum. Take a deep breath in. And exhale. Breathe in deeply. Exhale. Inhale and yawn and stretch. Reaching out through your feet, your toes, your fingertips. And let the brain observe. This is called proprius interoception. Sorry, interoception. The brain is perceiving proprioception and interoception at the same time. Where you are in space and your internal map of that. Draw your left knee into your chest, roll to your right side, cuddle up into a little nugget, a little ball on your side. Fold in, fold in, fold in. And from this small ball, breathe expansively into your back body. Breathe into all the nooks and crannies. Bringing in that will, that strength, that vitality by activating the lungs. And call in your North Star. What is it that you want today? What is your guidepost, your guiding light for today? And maybe that's simply a request because you don't know what it is yet. So perhaps you turn it over to something bigger, an offering. How may I be of service today? And then using your left hand, press yourself up and rise, finding a strong, tall seat. Reaching the arms up. Hands come together in a prayer and it slides over the forehead, over the lips, past the throat, and it lands at the heart. Nuzzle your thumbs into the breastbone, elbows point right and left, head points up north, sits bones pressing south into the earth. I was thinking yesterday, I was reading um, the Torah portion yesterday, um, and just thinking about, you know, the story of God made man um, on the sixth day and how, like, there are interpretations that God made the earth for us and then gave us the land. So I was thinking if he spent five days on the earth and just one day on us, maybe I think we're here for the land. We're here to be the shepherd, which it says, but like somehow it's gotten warped to like the earth is up for us. I really think we're here for it. It's just connecting to this mama, to this mother earth, this guy. What can we do for her? What can we do for to help us sustain life? One home together, inhale. Oh. Bring your heart to your mind, thumbs rise to the forehead. We bow forward, honoring ourselves made of stardust, made of earth, made of the universe. We honor our creativity as women, as human. We honor one another, thankful for this practice, for our bodies, for this life. So grateful for all of you. I love you. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Hi, you guys. I'll see you next week. Love you all. Or sooner. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Caitlin. Hmm. Thank you, Taylor and Sharon and Karen and Elena.